more important you will see no need to travel too far to understand how lucky you are Everybody, we are back. Mr. Brown, Mr. Marks, how you feeling? I am well. I spent a little time out on the range today, lassoing some calves, and, <laughs> and I'm ready to roll. How are you? I, I'm fantastic. Uh, Rad TV. It feels good to be back to the basic. This whole thing's gotten so complicated with the 21 souls, this and that. Now we're back to Rope It Up TV. I believe season three, episode one. Is that where we are? Season two, episode one. Wasn't season two when we moved in here? Yeah, I guess there's some... Oh, we um, never did a season two. We had some unaired episodes. Okay, let's just call this one season three, episode one. Okay, I love it. We'll go with that. We're, yep, we're still along the railroad tracks here in East Philadelphia. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, we still have uh, producer Nick Perry behind the camera. And um, I Nic think... Nicholas Perry. Nicholas Perry. Yes. Great Nicholas Perry. There's a few Nicholas Perrys, but this is the great Nicholas Perry. There are no other Nicholas Perrys that I'm concerned about. I love that. Um, we're going to break it down today, I think, with some unreleased music. Mm -hmm. Well, it may be released by the time you guys actually watch this, but um, what do we come in with? This is Rosaway, uh, a duo. This is on Infinity Gritty. Yes. Uh, Adam Ahuja's label. Adam is on this record a little bit. Um, Rosaway is uh, Rachel Ombreden and Stefan Avalaneda. Uh, apologies if I butchered that pronunciation, but I, I think I did okay. These are some really, really interesting people from Paris, France. Yep. A place that uh, I visited in the spring. Uh, and, I, and I had dinner with, with the two of them. Oh, get out. It was a good time. Yeah, yeah. Was how, nice. how, how was that? Where'd you guys go? I didn't even know that. They found a secret restaurant that we would have never located, uh, and uh, you know we, we had a we had a nice thing. Yeah. I love it's that. Interesting. I really enjoy Paris. Uh, I gotta say, like, if not for the work I've taken on, right, I'd be back there tomorrow. You know, just like this is all great. It's wonderful. It's a lot of work, and if I had my way, I'd just walk out that door. See you later. Walk down the Champs Elysees to France, huh? Out of all the places, that's the first place. From there, I can, I can, I true. can go wherever I want. True, true. Uh, I stole those lines, by the way. I'm quoting a song. What I song? snuck it in. For <laughs> See, I told you there were going to be surprises. I told you. There were I get be nervous when there are surprises. Joni Mitchell wrote a song called "Free Man in Paris," which I heard when I was a young man. And it was interesting. It was a song about a record label guy who was tired of the game. And he's like, I'd walk out that door tomorrow just to be unfettered and alive in Paris, you know? And uh, I, I heard it on the radio the other day and I thought to myself, how did after 45 years suddenly this song get personal for me? You know? But that's awesome. This, what it is. this track was actually released uh, not too long ago in the summer of 2018, June 29th, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's as a as a as a precursor to this EP, to, yeah. Right. The EP comes out on February 15th, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, you know, you you mentioned a few people, uh, Adam Ahuja. You know, obviously he's on keyboards on this. It was recorded at E. Scott Linder's. Our recording studio, who's also Pinch on recording studio, that's right, right. Mm -hmm. which is also mm -hmm. uh, you know that artist is also on Infinity Gritty, you know, mm -hmm. under the the Rope It Oak fam. We have a podcast coming up with uh, E Scott. Oh and, really? I haven't, yeah. I haven't checked that out, out yet. On uh, Mixcloud. Dot com slash 21 soul yeah it's a great conversation yeah i'm digging what, what what adam's doing and and the different artists he's bringing to the roster you know they all have their separate individual sound but it's definitely a, a cohesive uh approach to to what he's doing at the label so i'm enjoying it thoroughly Beautiful. enjoying it i'm on 
I'm gonna have to turn this up. Let's jam. Oh. Tonight has a really moody tone, I have to say. Let me get this right because hate I ever met you. You ever feel that way? <laughs> it's a good question. There's a couple of people I guess I can put in that category. Yeah. Hate's a strong word. It is a strong hate's word. Hate's a strong word. I don't think he's using it in its strongest way right here. No. Yeah. If you dug into the lyrics, I no, think. Like, hate I ever met you. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, I'm going to forget you. Right. It's, you're, you're off my radar. Yeah, this is a, a new song. This is actually a single coming coming out on uh, tomorrow, January 4th. Right. So tomorrow in recording time, right. possibly last week. But I'm really excited about 2019. And, and Anu's son kicking it off with two singles. Yep. Yes, tomorrow. Yes. Um, Captain America. Captain America. Yep. Yep. Along with this track as well. Should be premiered on uh, allhiphop.com. That's correct. I think. And, uh, I'm so interested in having Anu come down here to Philly. We're going to see him on January 10th. That's right. Next Thursday at the 21 Soul Sessions. And uh, I, I want to I wanna see what's, what's happening with that. Well, they call him Anu the, the Giant, so I'm, I'm going to assume that he's probably... I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm not a big guy, so it's probably going to be like one of one of those situations. Anu the Giant. <laughs> the picture looks, looks terribly intimidating. No. And yet... Now, but, person. but I've been I've been digging into history, this. Yeah. Absolutely, I've been I've been digging into the album, and you know it kind of covers a, a broad range uh, of genres, and you know I, I'm I really dig when when music goes deeper as far as relevancy lyrically and what's going on. So it has a little bit of that. It has some of the feel good stuff that you can just like nod your head to. Um, it's a, it's a good mix, and I can't wait to hear what other people think about the album. Nice. A little background on Anu, right? So, yeah. it's funny, a lot of people, and I, I, I thought it was just me, I, I wasn't really that familiar with him when uh, we first met, um, talked on the phone about putting, putting the record out. Right. Um, Co-conspirator and collaborator with uh, with Mr. Robert Glasper yep. on uh, Black Radio and also the Miles Davis movie. Um, he feels like that guy behind the guy, you know, like... Yeah. It d- definitely, definitely the vibe, and and Robert Glasper is all up and down this this release as well, as along with a few other Rope Dope uh, cast members. I was digging into the credits. I was like, man, it's it's funny how the circle, you know, the circle of influence of people just keep coming back. So um, Robert on the record again and again. Yeah, Maurice Brown. Maurice Brown's yeah. on the record. Yeah. Let's see here who I can pull up. Uh, Alex Hahn, which was an interesting one. I know you weren't too familiar, but I remember Alex Hahn as like a kid. He was like 13 years old and being self-proclaimed all around the world, just killing it on the saxophone. Um, you know, who else we got here? So Bernice Earl Travis. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 definitely littered with, uh, you know, the, the people's people. Casey Benjamin on flute. On flute. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really, uh-huh. really, it's really... Casey really... Benjamin, robot of OG, OG right there. I can say that. Yeah. On the first Rope It Up record. Yeah. I love it. Speaking of Rope It Up OG, I'm really excited about that that project coming up, that radio project coming up. 20, 20 years of Rope It Up uh, with, uh, with BK Radio. You're going to announce that right now? No, I mean, I didn't announce it. I just kind of, <laughs> I guess I did announce it. There you it's go. Cool. There you go. A little project coming up. but So uh, we're coming into the 20th year of Rope It Up. That's right. You know? 
it feels like uh, I mean we're we're at the we're at the beginning of a year, a new beginning, but also that we're we're kind of at the end of a chapter, or the beginning of the end of it. it's like last chapter of the book or I love it. last chapter of this this uh, episode or whatever it is. But you know you take some time to reflect when you come up with to a milestone of twenty years. So we've got the twenty one soul sessions cooking in Philadelphia. That's right. There's a very good uh, chance that we'll be announcing uh, soon twenty one soul sessions in a couple of other key cities, possibly New York and Montreal. Ugh. Right, uh, which is an interesting thing, you know, getting into live music. But you know, rope it up celebrations around the world is what is what we hope to have. And so, well, it's there because the people are all over the world. I love this track, Speaking by the way. Speaking of all over the world, yeah, man. Let's take a little trip back to, or over to, Tokyo, to Japan. Mark DeClavolo has a special place for me because I remember coming on first to rope dope and Mark was the first release that you were like, Fabian, go. I'm like, what? Oh, Live at the Blue Whale? <laughs> yeah, Live at the Blue Whale. Nice. All right, folks, taking a little station break here. Time for the train to come through town. He's humming. Yeah, he was, he was in a hurry to get home. <laughs> Did we mention that we're in a train station? <laughs> I'm sure we did. I wish we could plan that every time. This like, it's so good. You know, it's funny. People came in. Somebody was in today and said, "Like, I guess it's okay, but if you're recording, and the train comes through. What are you gonna do?" And I'm like, we always love it. <laughs> I think we're still gonna go. So much better. Well, this is like the, the the Friday train, even though it's Wednesday. So I noticed, like, at the end of at the end of a given week, usually they bring all the empty cars back from. Like, they, they take them down all week, and then they bring a big, long... Back to Philly. Pack of empties back. Oh, well, here we are. Um, this track is from his upcoming album, Heritage. Yes. Which is... Uh, a two-album album. album. two-album album. I love it. Can you pronounce the name of this track for me so I don't butcher it? Uh, I'll try. <laughs> uh, Memories of Nanzenji. I love it. I love it. Talk to me a little bit, Lewis, because I, I know you spent a lot of time with Mark... Uh, you know, on and offline. Talk to me a little bit about his inspiration for for this album, and what makes it different than the previous albums that he's that he's put out with Roberto. Well, I think you can already hear that he's in a much more serious space, in a, in a much more um, adventurous space, but also a traditional a traditional space, a reverent mm. space, right? And so Mark is half Japanese. Uh, and uh, half New Zealander, which I think I think Welsh. Um, but you know, we, there's an interesting podcast coming up as well where we talk about Mark. Mark reveals what his life was like growing up in New Zealand, and as he describes it, being other. Hmm. Like he's not really a full New Zealander. And then also spending time in Japan, his mother's homeland, uh, and being other. Yeah. And then moving around the world and being other, other yeah. but now but now not really other you know in a sense like he's part of a, a global community but this album uh, is his tribute to uh, that homeland to Japan yep so uh, it, it, this is one of those things where you set something up you know Mark is an amazing musician truly 
talented, wonderful individual, very focused, very much about um, purpose. Yep. And I remember getting the recording, and the minute I heard the first track that he came in with just the piano, yeah. I was like, this is going to be amazing. Because it's easy for an artist who has a particular style and, and a vibe to continue with that vibe. True. Record after record after record. And there's kind of almost an expectation from fans that you're going to do that. And then to take on uh, such a big project uh, and perform it live and record it, uh, there's a lot of risk, a lot of dedication, and you can feel that in the beauty of the, of the recording. The, the recording live piece is what really gets me every time with Mark's releases. Uh, the audience should do themselves a favor and put a pair of headphones on and listen to this album because you start to hear things that you may not notice at first pass or second pass. Like that, back at the bar? <laughs> no, not no, that. No, not like that? No, okay. I'm talking about compositionally, the uh -huh. yeah, the band, on what the band is doing from a composition point of view, executing it live, damn near flawless, but the integrity and the feel, the vibe, it's like, I don't know how he does it time and time and time again, but he nails it to the floor every, every freaking time, man. So, um... Well, I mean, that, that's that's one of his things, you know? It's a I mean, huge to, thing. To know how to do that, to improvise in the moment and, and to execute in the moment, you know? It's, it's absolutely uh, beautiful. So that's coming out on February 8th with... Uh, the first uh, edition, first part February. of Heritage is February 8th, and the second part will be April 5th. If you're in Japan, you can get them both. I love that. Uh, in late January. Here's a good one from RSVP Records. <laughs> things together and uh, tracks like this come up and, and, and shows like tonight come up and, and like I'm reminded of somebody saying to me like uh, are you guys a jazz <laughs> like, you know and there, there's a certain sense of trepidation and anxiety around like music that, that's a little bit different still made by it. and the players, everything, the production, everything is from people who have been trained in jazz, really. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. But this is different. Jazz musicians playing contemporary music. Yeah. But, but, but they can never kind of like, it's always going to be more, uh, more risky, more, more, more experimental than popular music. It's gonna, it's gonna have elements, but I love it. So, so this is Doobie Pow. Uh, the song titled "Just Do It" comes out. Uh, actually, the album comes out on March 8th, but you can grab it February 1 uh, as far as the pre-order goes. And the single's coming out this month. I think January 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Mid January. And then if you're if you're going to Nam, uh, you can get the CD well before Street Date. Do it down there. Yeah. You got to break down for me because I know I know Doobie, Sput, C, right? RSVP. What's the how does Sput, how does Sput do it, man? I, they, I can't ask you any more basic than that. How the hell does Sput do it? Where, where does he find these guys? Is it all the church? Like, is it, what's going what's going on with Sput and find these guys? <laughs> well, my interview with Doobie went went like that. You know, I, I dug into those questions because Doobie was raised in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut, okay. Yeah, in the church, right? And ha have you been to Hartford? 
uh, a pass through. I've never really spent any time there. Yeah, he he mentioned somewhere in the uh, somewhere in the interviews, like every time I tell people I'm from Hartford, somebody says, uh, "Are there are there black people there?" Well, that's that would be my right. <laughs> so Hartford's really interesting. I was driving up there once, and I I was on my way to Maine, and I went up and decided to go up through Hartford, and the traffic was brutal so I got off the highway within about five or six blocks <laughs> I kid you not there's like uh, Cuban dudes Cuban kids on like low rider bicycles just cruising by me down the street I love it and like there's street fenders out and I'm you know <laughs> like I thought I was in Hartford <laughs> you know but Hartford is Really, uh, much more diverse than you think. It's, it's some for some reason. It's uh, and I, I'd love to dig in more to the history. For some reason, it's it's uh, much more culturally diverse than you think. Uh, and Doobie grew up in the church there, right? Uh, but musical family, and as part of the church, they would go out to events, you know, okay, around the country, musical events, you know, uh, and church events, and that is where he met Spike. So the church connected them. It's amazing. And then I, I'm just so fascinated with this semi-nomadic lifestyle of not just a given musician who travels around the world because he gets a record deal and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and blows up and has a tour, but just a consistent, interconnected, traveling around the country, you know, going to some strange places, you know? I mean, not your, not the usual. I was in, uh, <laughs> stories, I got stories. <laughs> can I, can I, can I digress and, and, <laughs> You can't, but don't lose that thought because it sounded like it was I'm not going to lose that thought. Oh, uh, yes. I'm going to queue up, uh, Citizen. Yep. From Duncan Eagles. We're going to let it play and, uh, it looks like... I talk so much, we're out of time. Um, I take my kids skiing one time. Uh, my brother had uh, what, do you, what do you call it when it, they've got a timeshare? Okay. Right. So he's like, this is one of the places you can do the timeshare, and it was uh, got to be one of the cheesiest places on the planet Earth. It's like the Split Rock Lodge in Mount Airy, Pennsylvania. It's up in the Poconos, right? And we get up there, and I'm not. You know, no dis. Sorry, kids, but I'm not looking forward to. You know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, maybe I'm looking forward to skiing a little bit, seeing the kids try it, but also just like four kids to process the whole thing. It's cold, layers of clothes. Who wears that other glove? All that stuff. It's a right? job. It's yeah. I know. So we walk into this hotel and we're thinking, well, it's gonna be nice, but it's kind of like it's it's like it was nice in the '70s, right? You know, and this is like the early 2000s, I guess. And I walk in to, we all walk in the lobby, and I gotta tell you, like, filled with church people. African American church. Dig it. Congregation. Everywhere. Dressed. To the boom, 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 boom. I get in the elevator, and we get to like the second. Now I go up in the elevator, we unload, and then I go, I, have, I forgot something in the car, we go back down. I go back down with two of my kids, we get in the elevator. And there's this dude gets on with uh, a helper, an assistant. Okay. You know? And then the elevator opens at the next floor and the doors open up and there's like 30 people waiting to get on and they look in the elevator and they see this guy and they're like, <gasps> and then it happens at the next floor and the next <laughs> floor and the next floor and everybody's freaking out. And I was just like, who, who are you? And he's like, I'm Ty, Ty Trivet. <laughs> I'm like, that's do, great. do I know anything? I don't know anything. I'm like, I'm like, oh, you're the guy whose face was on the thing when we came back. <laughs> then I did my homework. I'm going to end with that story. That's a great story. Citizen, Duncan Eagles. Yes, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you check out. Uh, share, subscribe, comment. Do all the fun things, guys. Most importantly, come back next week for some more entertainment. Yeah, support Rope It Up. Support 21 Soul. And go find Duncan Eagles in the UK. 
coming out this spring. Probably good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.